Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome members and guests. Uh, this is the February meeting of the International Model Stock Investment Club. We are a better investing model club open to the public. All our meetings are held on the third Monday of each month at this time, the exception being December when we meet uh, on the second Monday of the month. All our meetings and stock studies are held online, allowing us to have members from around the world. Our current members are from the United States, Canada, and China. Guests, uh, you'll be observers uh, tonight, and such you'll be muted during the meeting, but we'll have an opportunity for questions and comments once the meeting ends. Any companies that we mentioned today are for educational purposes only and are not intended to be a recommendation for buying or selling any stocks. We ask that you conduct your own review and analysis of any company of interest before making an investment decision. And this meeting may mention products or services not endorsed by Better Investing or the club. The views expressed are those of our members and do not necessarily represent those of Better Investing. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel for future use. And um, so with that, I just uh, will go through the agenda very quickly. Um, we're going to start with the uh, Treasurer's Report and uh, uh, we'll discuss a uh, portfolio review process very briefly that, that we've been working on in the background. Uh, with us tonight, we're fortunate to have um, Suzanne Coster, um, who is a, uh, on the executive of the online chapter of Better Investing. She um, has extensive experience uh, with uh, model clubs, although I should mention she's very young. So although she has extensive experience, she's very young. And um, she's going to talk to us today about about um, conviction in in our stocks and uh, how to uh, uh, how how to present uh, uh, our stock uh, reviews. Um, we don't have any education topics or stock studies this month, but uh, we have three uh, uh, reports. We have uh, uh, two annual reports and and one. Uh, quarterly report. Uh, Facebook annual report will be presented by Megumi uh, Yamanoha and uh, the peer review is uh, Jane uh, Chen and Comcast annual report is presented by Bernard Scoville and Mina Mikhail is the uh, peer reviewer um, and uh, uh, Gabe will be presenting LAM research Q1 and Chris is the peer reviewer so with that, I am going to pass it over to uh, uh, to Tom for the um, treasurer's report. Tom? Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, okay, good. Uh, so this, I'm just, just, this is going to be um, in, uh, an abbreviated report in the interest of time. Um, this is our report. I will post the complete report uh, on the website after the meeting. I'll send a link where it is. Uh, this is the portfolio gain and loss uh, statement. Um, we uh, our best performer by far is is LAM Research, followed by Innovative Industrial, and we have four companies where we're in a losing position at this point: uh, Franco Nevada, Kirkland, Qualys, and Vertex. Um, this is the Portfolio sorted by total return for the past 12 months. The four down here in the red box are trailing the market by approximately 20% or more, um, or the S&P anyway. Uh, this is the portfolio sorted by manifest uh, projected annual return. Their uh, average company they say is 4.6% at this at this point. So. These down here at the at the bottom uh, would just be uh, matching the market or uh, le less potential return than the market according to Mark's judgment. Uh, this is the portfolio sorted by Morningstar price to fair value. The few here at the top are they considered to be a little bit undervalued. 
one is fairly valued and then over one is you know valued more than uh, higher than the, what they consider to be their fair value they use a discount cash flow model to calculate fair value uh, this is the return of the total return of the sector uh, ETFs and uh, technology has been the best over the past year energy is the worst these are the percentages that the club holds in each of those sectors uh, this is the sector diversification report this is the company size diversification so we have 19 percent small 21.7 medium, 31.5 mega and large, and 27.8% in cash. And if so, you know, that's just a brief brief highlights here. So if, I uh, thought this escape button, escape isn't letting me get out of here. Um, I'll have to figure that out. But uh, anyway, I'll pass it over to uh, uh, Tom Loftus or, uh, Loftus or any they can uh, talk about the portfolio review process okay thank you tom do you want to uh you did most of the work but maybe i'll just before you uh you get into it um i'll just give a quick background uh we've been looking at our portfolio and uh, uh we wanted to uh, make sure that we're beating the market by at least five uh five percent and uh so, you know, we've had some issues trying to sell stocks and replace uh, stocks that are not performing. So we've uh, we formed a small committee, uh, Tom uh, Jones and Tom Loftus uh, looked into this. They have to have to commend them for the, the level of effort that they put into this. They did a lot of work and uh, they looked at various methodologies. And one of the methodologies that we ended up um, uh, voting on to uh, to implement is uh, the one um, uh, that uh, that Tom will be looking at. So really, uh, the idea here is to look at our portfolio on a on a monthly basis and um, to look at those companies that are maybe not going to give us the return that we're hoping for, and replacing them with with something that will. So uh, Tom, if you want to just delve into a little bit more detail. Uh, we can. I'll uh, I'll explain what we'll do uh, going forward after you finish. So uh, this is the uh, portfolio review sheet that uh, Mike Torbison developed uh, to um, <laughs> take some statistics off the um, portfolio evaluation review technique form, which we call PERT. Uh, so the the diverse this is the diversification Tom went over that so we have targets and uh, we can identify in this column here where we don't meet those targets uh, similarly with um, we go into the uh, PERT and look at in the B section where the the companies aren't meeting their their objectives that <laughs> from a, an earnings point of view, a revenue point of view. The third part is the quality, the quality part, and uh, it identifies uh, uh, eight screens. And if, this is the um, one of the more difficult parts of the form to fill out because there's eight screens over your 12 or 16 uh, companies. And uh, ready, um, and I worked together, and uh, we got the the PERT form uh, converted into a um, Excel form, and then Ready made, developed some functions where the uh, when on the spreadsheet it will be able to do all the uh, the screens and identify these companies without doing it sort of in a by a manual method. Um, the D part is a performance, and this is part of our iClub um, detail that, again, Tom talked about before, what's the performance, what's our objectives. So, again, just turn it over to you, uh, Hank, if you want to talk about just how we're going to initiate this. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so what what we are thinking we're going to do going forward is is that um, each each one of our members will have one stock to follow, and then uh, one stock to peer review. And we do the peer review just to check on each other to make sure that we're um, um, you know we're we're uh, the judgments are make sense and so on. And then um, we're going to generate a watch list. Uh, we don't have a watch list at the moment. And um, so each each member will follow a stock on the watch list. And, um, and then, uh, so for example, you know, if we have an overvalued uh, stock that we sold, we would put that on the watch list or something that, that we're, uh, we're, we're interested in. And then um, we'll combine the, um, the, the watch list stocks along with the actual portfolio and uh, look at those uh, using using this portfolio review tool. Um, we're going to assign a small team of two uh, to be the portfolio managers and uh, what, what each member in the club is going to be required to do is um, do their SSG for their, uh, their stock selection guide for the, the, the companies they follow, but in addition to that, the, uh, the the company they're following on the watch list as well. And then we'll be putting all of those into a uh, into a directory, and then looking at the a matrix of of stocks both on the in the portfolio and those on the watch list. And and uh, that way we can easily switch things out if if uh, if the, the PE or valuation of a of a holding is is uh, you know it's gone up significantly we may want to sell it and place it with something on the watch list that has uh, more of an opportunity to grow so uh, we're going to be developing this process a little bit more and and writing it down so that uh, and we'll share it with everybody once once it's complete but again I just wanted to to thank Tom and and Tom and uh, and ready for for all of the work that they put into this they did a lot of work and I can I can tell you it was uh, a lot of hours and in the background so I want to thank you guys for for doing that um, so I guess we can move on to uh, Joanne do you have the uh, can you put up the agenda please what's the um, what's the next uh, uh, education topic right now we are looking at uh, um, oh, sorry, yes. okay sorry so uh, Suzanne you're you're gonna um, uh, talk a little bit about how your club uh, looks at uh, individual uh, holdings and so on. So I'll pass it over to you. Okay, let's see. Let me show my screen. And thank you very much for taking the time to uh, to do this. You are very welcome. I can, can you see my screen? No. Uh, no. We we was there. You go. Yes. You can see my screen or you cannot? We can, but you don't have anything on it except the the GoToWebinar link mm. page. Okay. okay, it's showing my wrong screen. Oh, okay. you have dual monitor, huh? Yeah, yeah, let me just see okay. if I can change the screen. Let me see. Um, you know what I can do is I can, I can uh, let me see. Hang on, I don't, okay, I sure. did something different the other day. Drag. Yeah, I could drag it, but you, usually you just ask me which screen I want to show. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can stop showing my screen. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can click to start sharing. All right, let me see if I can switch my screens. Hold on. Okay, let me just escape. Bear with me one second. Sorry, guys. Okay. Beginning. Okay, now let me share my screen. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now, yes? Yes. No? Yes, okay. Is this Suzanne? This is. So this is Suzanne Koster. I'm, I oh. am a member, as, um, as Haney mentioned, I'm a member on the board of directors for the online chapter. I've also had my own investment club. We'll be celebrating 25 years in May. So we've been through a lot of things, um, you know, particularly in growing, how do you grow your club? But one of the things I listened to um, in, at your November meeting was you were going back and forth about 
about companies and how do you sell them? And you had a lot of metrics. I will tell you that my club, we, we do use some of the metrics you use, but we're more fundamental investors like Warren Buffett and Ron Barron, sort of kick the tires. What does the company do? We listen to the earnings call. We want to hear what they're thinking, where they're going. And so I thought, well, how can I share that best with you? So I'm going to share a real stock from our club, and it starts back in 2014. So the, club, the, the stock is MassTech, the ticker is MTZ. So, let's see. so MassTech is an infrastructure company. They operate mainly in North America. They do engineering, building, installation, and maintenance of communications, energy, petroleum. Um, they build things. They, they, they're a hard asset company that, that truly goes out and builds. So they'll build um, cell phone towers and, and power lines, and um, they'll do all kinds of different power generation. So we were very interested in this company because they were very diversified. We thought that infrastructure was a good, to good thing at, that time, at the time we were looking at it. Um, and we thought the entry price point was great. So in September 2014, we bought 600 shares at $31 a share. We ran our SSG, we did all our fundamental investing, we looked at Value Line and Morningstar, and, and we did our own analysis and we thought that this was a great entry point for us. Well, at next month's meeting, the stock dropped to $27. So now we have a $2,500 loss. So we said, well, what happened? What happened to this stock so that it dropped $5 or in, in the last month? So it turns out that the start of a large fiber optic project was delayed until early 2015. The family owns, um, it's a family operated company that owns 40%. They reassured and said they were not worried. Matter of fact, they were going to purchase more shares. So you can see what happened to the stock from September to our October meeting. So what did we do? We purchased again. We purchased 300 more shares at $27, which brought our average share price down to $30, even though now we're still in a loss position. Now what happens? It's the first quarter 2015, so February. The share prices have now dropped to just about $20 and we now have a $9,000 loss. So we reevaluate the company again and we think, now what's happened to this company? Well, that project was delayed until the third quarter. Again, they're saying this is a huge project. It was actually AT&T cell phone towers and the project got delayed. AT&T was in the middle of a bunch of stuff at that time. And the family said, we, re we are reassuring. So we buy it again, 300 more shares at $20 a share. So our average share price is now $27 and we are still in a loss position. Now it becomes March, 2015. The shares are now up just a little bit, $20, and we have an $8,000, $9,000 loss. So what do we do at this point? We purchase again. 300 shares at $20. Now our average share price is $26. We are still in a loss position. But why do we have such conviction in this stock? Well, we listen to the company. We listen to the earnings report. We look at their pipeline. The company insiders are purchasing, and they're given confidence that projects, huge projects, are still in the pipeline. It's now October 2015. It's one year since we purchased the stock. The shares are down again to $16. We now have about a $10,000 loss. So what do we do? We purchase it again. Um, and so now our average share price is $24. We are still in a loss position, but again, the same reason. The company insiders say, look, the pipeline is long. It's very strong. We're reinvesting in some of the equipment we're gonna need to make this project go on. So now it's February, 2020. Shares have rebounded to over $50, and we have effectively doubled our money in five years. But of course, you know that February 28th is an optimal time to tell you about what happens after that. Um, so after that, the crash came in 2020, and the share price drops to $26. Um, so our club didn't purchase a single thing in March or April. We just didn't have any conviction on what could possibly happen with this pandemic. And we decided to sit on the sidelines. But then came our May meeting and the company guided that they were essential company and they were resuming operations and that they had a ton of stuff that they were gonna do. We purchased 275 shares at $42 a share. 
it's now August, the share prices are slightly up, we have a lot of cash, we look at all of the pieces in our portfolio and we decide we're gonna add to this position, we buy another 125 shares at $45 a share. Well, the price from, from the January 2020 to 12, 2020, it rebounded to almost $67. And so um, you can see that on our average cost basis, we really did well, but even better today because the stock price as of February 10th was $86. And if we consider just our initial investment all the way back in 2014 to today, our compounded annual return on our initial investment was 17% per year. So the purpose of this illustration is to kick the tires of the company, understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, who has conviction in the stock within the company. And just because the numbers don't look good, and just because you're in a loss position, and just because you hear sentiment elsewhere, that's not a good enough reason to dump something that you spent so much time and energy and work on. It's very hard, I think, to find really good positions. So I think I have a couple minutes left and I will, is it okay to entertain questions, Haney, or you want to wait to the end? Or? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So anyone have a question, a thought? So was, I mean, that's a, that's a very, um, that's a, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Very motivational, I guess. I can't, I can't find the right word, but, um, you know, how, how, how did you um did you have any debate about about selling Did some of your members you know want to pull the plug um and and you know how how did you keep this you know uh, conviction and and keep keep investing despite the losses that you had so um we, at this point we were doing monthly updates on our stocks we don't do that now, although this one we would have because it was obviously losing each month. Um, and so you come in and you yourself, whoever follows the stock, you have to own this. You have to personally have conviction in it. And when you do, and you bring that enthusiasm to everyone else, what you see and why you see it, then you bring people along on that journey. And yeah, if we needed to sell for a tax loss position, we might have considered that. And we did. We do trim on a regular basis. All of our holdings are completely equal weight in our portfolio. Um, and so um, we have a, any one time about 20 positions. Everything is five to 8%. As soon as it becomes 8%, we sell. And as soon as it, it drops less than five, we either have conviction in the stock and we add to our position or we sell. So that's our hardest number that we use. But beyond that, all of the other numbers that I saw you use for manifest investing and all of those other metrics, they are very meaningful to say, pay attention, look at me, but the person who follows the stock has to have true uh, understanding of what the company does to make money, where the company's going. And even if the market isn't rewarding that, can you see where the market might reward that at a later time? Okay, um, I have a question. So, so what from, size, uh, what size? Sorry, Bernard. Go ahead, Bernard. Sorry. Well, what size company is? Thanks, thanks, Haney. What size company is this? And were there ever any dividends? There are no dividends in this company, and I think it was a mid-sized company when we bought it, and it might be a mid to a large size company now. Um, I have a question from okay. one of thanks, our. Sir. I have a question from one of the guests through the the chat window, um, and. Uh, uh, Ayla Barnes, and she asks, has your club had an opposite story of continued losses when and when did you sell? Uh, what was the question? So she's asking if you've if you've had the opposite. Had you had uh, another ah. company maybe with, lo with continued losses like this where you have decided that maybe you should sell? Good question. That's a great question. So um, our club is 25 years old. And in the earlier days, we couldn't believe our good luck on some companies. You know, we bought it at $19. It's now up around $120. We thought we were just brilliant. Well, we we were we didn't at that point have a really good thought about trimming just not being greedy taking our gains and so we watched the stock go from twenty dollars 
to $120 and then down to $8. So there was something in there that we said, okay, when the position becomes 8% or more, we sell regardless. We sell over the 8% mark. So if the position is 10%, we sell 2% of the 2% 2 equity of that value. Um, and then the opposite is true. Um, yes, but I think we don't let it go that far. And, and usually we're ruthless when it becomes to December, particularly if we have a lot of gains, we'll just take our losses against our gains and we'll call it a day. Okay. Um, another question that's come in is how do you keep the um, the own and belief in the stock when uh, many investment clubs rotate companies every year or two? So some of our positions we've had for 15 years and we know the company so we really know the company we've watched it we watched the management changes we are on the earnings call even if all we do is read the transcripts we listen to the analysts who are asking those those tougher questions from not just the management's dog and pony show and so you tr you, you kind of get a sense of what's true and what's baloney what did they what did they say they were going to do last quarter did they do it and if not why didn't they do it does the excuse or reasoning sound good to you do they have something innovative that you think is different? Are they in a space where they differentiate themselves and are they continuing to do that? Are they buying other companies because they have the cash to do it or they believe it's a vertical? So we really look at very, very fundamental things. And if you like that kind of fundamental investing, um, besides Warren Buffett, who everyone knows, I would suggest you go to Ron Barron B-A-R-O-N. He is a fundamental kick the tires investor. His investments um, and his funds really do amazing year after year. He, you know, he spends a lot of time with management and he listens to what they say. And and you know, and that and this that's their investment style. I listen to what they say. The story sounds right to me. The numbers sound right to me. I have conviction. I'm going to continue to invest here. That's uh, that's really good advice. Um, Ron Barron, I think, is is the uh, uh, one of the big investors in Tesla, early investors. And, uh, for, that's right. For he was a, he was a seed he was a seed investor in Tesla. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and if you um, own any of the Barron shares, um, fund shares, you are invited to his um, annual conference every year, which is quite amazing. He has about 5,000 people at Lincoln Center in New York City. He brings in five CEOs from company holdings he has, and he really interviews them in a different kind of way. So it's it's really fascinating. You can watch it um, you know, virtually most of the time too. I think if you even go on his website, you could see past um, past uh, conferences. One, one thing I think that, that really resonates with me is, you know, that you said is the, um, is, is understanding the story because I think a, a lot of times we just um, uh, run through the stock selection guide in a in a mechanical sort of way. Um, you know, go go and look at analyst estimates, throw the numbers in, and um, you know we get a buy or sell or a hold. And I think uh, what you're what you're practicing is is really to go beyond that and, and really understand the company, listen to the the conference calls and I think that makes a lot of sense. You have to you have to know kind of how they're going to generate the numbers that you, your SSG is telling you, right? Um, it's not just a matter of plugging in numbers. Um, it's how, how do how do those numbers actually come about and, and manifest uh, themselves in, in terms of sales and, and earnings. So I think that's really uh, really good advice. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Um, Okay, I don't see any anything else here. Uh, let me just check. Uh, Brian, I, um, yeah, I think we've got all of them. So thank you very much, Suzanne, and uh, thanks for, for sharing that with us and, and uh, for taking the time. I know you're pretty busy, so really appreciate you uh, doing this. You're quite welcome. Well, thank you, and happy investing, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Suzanne. So how, how is it in New York, by the way? Are you getting hit with a with big snowstorms, or? I'm in Florida, and it's 84 degrees. Oh, you're so. in Florida. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm not very sad. 
Sad people are in Texas, I think, today. Maybe they're not even yeah. on the call yeah. because there's no power. So, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, Chris is, is in that boat, I think. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, I think H the, Hanny, uh, Mina has a question. Yeah. Uh, let me sure. see. Somebody, so, oh, somebody muted Mina and he, he can't speak, but he has a question about buy and sell limits. Mina, can you, if you can't use your microphone, could you type in the chat window what your question is? No, he's Did, not does he mean you. using limit orders? I don't know. His he says his um his microphone's on, but we can't hear him. What happened with you, Jay? Remember? Oh you yeah, because I, I I yeah I have a multiple speakers, so I was yeah. I oh. you need to select yeah. You I need don't to know for select case. the right speaker, Mina, but mm -hmm. uh, microphone. Anyway, his question is: Does your group set a max price despite conviction in a company? Well, you know, we'll we definitely use the SSG, and we'll know um, what the buy range is. Okay. And we're pretty, right. and we're pretty, and, and we use the buy range just as you do. Um, we okay. use we use thirty three, thirty three, thirty three for our buy range and sell okay. buy sell hold. And then the the same goes for when to sell. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, so when he's although, when it's in this, though, though, you know, the limits, of course, to the SSG is it's backward looking sometimes for um, it might not take into account. Um, I've just bought a company. I'm changing my place. Here's where we're going. Um, the company's adding things that they're talking about that are not in the numbers. So it's hard to project oh. on a number that doesn't exist yet. So that's a little bit that we're not as definitive on the sell, but on the buy, we definitely are. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Joanne, could we put up the uh, the agenda just to see what's sure. what's uh, next? I think it's um, is it Facebook? Yes. Okay. Uh, Megumi. Megumi. Should we just give it to Megumi? Yes. Megumi. I, I wish they would mail out the agenda. But... Um, Sorry, it's also... Bernard. Yeah, you can download the agenda from the the pane here from the, the presentation. There's a a file. You handouts. just double click on the PDF the handout. Matt uh, Matt emailed it earlier, but you can yeah. There's in the handout section in the chat window. Uh, you can download the agenda. All right. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question. Should we use a quarter or use annual, Suzanne? Um, for the SSG, I forgot when do we use a quarter versus annual. Um, I I don't I don't think it matters unless you're gonna unless something happened drastically in your quarters. I we like to use an I mean we use annual, but you can I would say if you you know. And, and different companies are going to be different. So if you click around and you try to figure out where it is and what's right, I think you'll come up with what you, what's, what's the best fit. Mm. Uh, Megumi, do you have the screen? Yes. Yeah, I, she, yeah. We're looking at it. Her screen. Oh, we're looking, okay. All yeah. right. How about we try annual, Megumi? I didn't complete the, um, I completed the, the, the quarterly report, but I forgot there was an annual um, form that we're supposed template that we're supposed to fill out. So sorry about that. Um, I'll get that done this week before we have any final motions to buy or hold Facebook. Um, but um, they had another great quarter. I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but um, they did really well this quarter. Their revenues were up 22%. And even more year over year, um, they were up 33%. Um, their expenses were up, but it's all due to um, infrastructure, research and development, hiring hardware investments. I mean, during the pandemic, they added like 13,000 plus employees. Um, they are saying, guidance is saying that their revenue growth may stabilize. Um, some of the bump up was caused because people were staying home and needed ways to, uh, you know, connect with, connect socially, but also the small businesses needed a way to quickly get an online um, store presence. So Facebook really helped with that. 
um, they don't foresee expenses changing much going forward. Um, but like I said, they do a lot of investing in um, technology. So I guess I'll move on to my SSG. So for my forecast uh, revenue was 20%, and so was my earnings per share, which um, falls within the analyst consensus. Did you do a, uh, did you look at value line or any other analysts, what they give? Yeah, so value line had, you know, the value line has that weird seven, nine, uh, 17 to 19 to 23 to 25 uh, as far as years. And theirs was 20.5. Yahoo's one year projection was 19.4. And Zach's was 19.42. We look and, long term. You say one year? Yeah, Zach's is one year, but they don't oh. give anything else as far as oh. I know, unless maybe you get a subscription to the uh, to Zach's. Or, and then as far as the earnings per share, value line had 15.5. Can you click annual instead on um, quarter? Yeah, I did that. I don't think it- I will change the piece out of the back. Yeah, it will change later. Okay. Okay, so uh, back to earnings per share, value line had 15.5, Yahoo for the next five years, 21.5, and Zach's one year, 20.6. So let me, I'm gonna click it back to quarter just to see what did you say would change? Make the screen larger. Could you make the screen larger? How's that? Better. That's good. Okay. So, Same. Jay, what's going to change here? If, well, I, if you better. change it, can you go back to click the uh, uh, annual since we are projecting the. Yeah, but what are we, what are we looking at? What's going to change here? You will see. I... Can you just. Okay. I don't know exactly, but sometimes number changes. Okay. Go to second page. It changed very slightly. Uh, what? But yeah. what numbers? Twenty was it the twenty five? Was before was twenty five point one one estimate high earnings share? I don't remember. Very slightly. Yep. Uh, so there was comments from Reddy mm -hmm. about I agree with him about your high PE and low PE twenty nineteen. They are very close. Yeah, so now I realize what he was saying. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess the number two is next to three on my keyboard. I would I would have hoped oh, okay. I picked 30 instead of 20. Okay. But uh, I kept it because I didn't want to confuse. I didn't want to update anything. Um, I think Jane's study had 30. Um, but if that if this went up, it's only going to increase this um, upside downside ratio to even higher. So, um, yeah, so I had picked 20 and then my low price, yeah. I think Tom Torbenson in his uh, review of our portfolio is that we weren't um, giving positive enough uh, estimates when we hel are holding a stock. Say that one more time. That we're not, oh, go ahead. Uh, He's he's saying that we're too conservative with yeah. the forward PEs. Yeah. When he reviewed our portfolio, he said you guys are too too conservative with the uh, with your PEs. You should you should be a little bit more aggressive. So we might yeah. want so to change you, that. To should 30. I change it now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll yeah, change it. Yeah. Change it to thirty and see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I think I sent you I sent you some comments on on the PE, I mean, the historical PE for Facebook is around is around 30 something. So I think 30 is, a, is actually still pretty conservative. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, well, let's see what happens. How did I pick this one? You use calculated low price. Okay, what's one seven? Low price 191. So yeah, this bumps it up to a definite 
So for your earnings projection, um, did you make any changes compared to last year or last quarter, whatever you, you gave, or did you keep the yeah. same? Yeah, no, last last time the sales projection was 16. I bumped it up to 20 Okay. Um, based on our reviewer. And then uh, earnings 13, I bumped it up to 20. Okay. Magumi, where do you see the um, where do you see this some of the the regulatory pressures on on Facebook and the privacy concerns? The fact that they um, uh, change the privacy uh, re um, requirements on WhatsApp and so on. Do you, do you see that might have any negative impact going forward on their on their sales or earnings? Um. I don't know which way it would, I mean, sure. I would think it would have a negative impact, but I just don't see how Facebook really is gonna be stopped. They have so much potential to grow. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't know, between, I think it, between two of their four software, Facebook and either Instagram or, um, what is it whatsapp and they also have messenger i mean like half of the population of the world is you know uses it and you know so much of small businesses are starting to you know depend on it and they're investing you know so much in technology as far as virtual reality or you know ai um they're building infrastructure um, data centers and offices, and they hired during the pandemic. Um, and if there was going to be any sort of regulatory sort of negative impact on what they do, I mean, they're in the news every day. I think we would hear about it ahead of time yeah. and be able to, you know, adjust our holding accordingly. So. Yeah, I mean, I just from a you know anecdotally, my my daughter keeps you know s um, selling things on on Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> and uh -huh. uh, before it used to be other other platforms, and it's uh, it seems that a lot of people are migrating to Facebook for uh, for e-commerce. So I think that's a a, a big growth uh, area for them. Yeah. And you know, I, again, I don't use Facebook, so I don't don't know like the intimate, you know, workings of each of the different uh, software. But you know, they're also working on sort of what they call groups, where they can like people can form communities. And I'm thinking that's more like maybe next door type. So they're right. sort of expanding that social network to larger groups of people. Right. Um, yeah, so there is that. Um, yeah. I think, um, we yeah, need, I think this we'll, is Joanne. Can, can, let's can grow an even faster. You just can did. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Joanne. Okay. Um, Suzanne, I have a question for you. Um, under our zoning, we usually, we always, I should say, use 25, 50, 25%. Is there a reason why you use the 33, 33, 33? Uh, that's just what we've always used. Uh, okay. um, and, and I think, I mean, to be honest, you could play around with any of these numbers and I could yeah. make anything be in the buy range. Yeah. yeah. You know, I could yeah. change my forecast. I could say those earnings we're projecting off are no good. You could look at these earnings rates and, you know, click off some of them. So, you know, I don't think it matters that much. You have to know you know where they're going and what they're doing i would guess that the regulatory landscape would be the thing here that i would focus on could, could that affect your earnings okay thank you uh, i thought matt just sent out an article about apple and facebook i did not get a chance to read it matt did you have any input about facebook versus apple something yeah so i was just reading through the earnings call transcript too in the CFO commentary. So he, they made a pretty big warning about 2021 um, revenue in the second half of the year because of the change from iOS 14. So 
Um, what's going to happen basically is iOS 14, there's going to be a warning and they're going to essentially notify users, uh, Apple users or iPhone or iPad or, or any of them. Uh, and they're going to give them the option and make it much more like in their face to turn off ad tracking. So if they turn off ad tracking, they, the thinking is there will be less targeted ads, they'll be less effective on Facebook because they won't know who those people are, right? That's how Facebook works today and why people like to advertise on there because you can really target your specific consumer. So I think why maybe this stock has kind of stayed down or not gone up very much, given like all the you know impressive numbers is nobody really knows what's that what that's going to do to the revenue of facebook um so they i was just reading an article here um it said so basically it's an idfa it's an identifier for advertisers that gives a unique, unique identifier for mobile devices and is used to target and measure the effectiveness of advertising at a user level across mobile devices if you turn that off on your iphone you're not going to know all the things that kind of make Facebook's algorithms work, um, which they think will hurt their revenue, potentially the revenue per user, right? So advertisers aren't getting as effective results from advertising on Facebook. Maybe they take their ad money somewhere else, um, which could hurt the, you know, Facebook's revenue kind of going forward. Uh, but nobody really knows what's going to happen, how many people are going to do that, um, and so forth. But the expectation of this article says currently, about 70% of iPhone users share uh, their IDFA with the app publishers, but they estimated it's going to drop to 10 to 15% when they make this update. So I think that's really kind of the concern is like, what does that do to like revenue and earnings growth um, for Facebook? Maybe more so. So I don't know. I guess my question was like, uh, where do we get the um, earning that 20 percent like is that too high is that like recent enough is that taking into account these changes etc do you know how many that's a very you know there are as compared to other android how they're what do you know what percentage of cell phones are iphones over? in the u.s it's about 50 percent iphone i just looked that okay. up too that's a very logical argument except that matt needs to be more transparent <laughs> um, he, he can't stand Facebook. <laughs> I can't. I think it's a terrible business. Well, I, think you should have, I think you should have started with that, Matt. Yeah, well, I'll finish with it. I think it's a terrible <laughs> business. They make, they sell their users to make money. <laughs> Going back to Suzanne's tire kicking, I think it's the worst kind of business in the whole entire world and they're just taking all the users for putzes. <laughs> it's mind. like it's like the most hated successful business. You have to say that most users are aware of yeah. that. Yes. So chances are that they will not disable that feature just for the sake of being targeted with what they are targeted now. So you could, I agree, it's it's kind of business that everybody knows you're selling your information all the time, but still how many users you have. People still upload it and keep it and only a few people like Matt and maybe Megami are not using it. So kudos oh. to you guys, but most people do. Um, personally, I, I, I don't use Facebook. I like Facebook. However, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy using Facebook. I pardon, yeah. pardon, Jay, I have, but yeah. I, I enjoy using Facebook. I just can't stand the like the visual ad. I mean, I haven't used it. I don't have an account, but like just the constant things that pop up, it drives it would drive me crazy. So, but I think that's the point of it. Okay, so personally, I don't use Facebook, even though I have an account. But however, mm -hmm. I use Facebook for a small business. I really think Facebook mm -hmm. helped drive the, the, the very cheap way of uh, advertising yes. uh, the business. Yes. I and, have... you know, and their, their argument is that they help small and medium sized businesses compete mm -hmm. with the larger businesses because otherwise they wouldn't be able to afford what the larger businesses have access to, which I appreciate. Um, I, 
I did read the transcript of the conference call this quarter, and I think mm -hmm. Facebook management did acknowledge the concerns over iOS 14 platform change. Yes. But they, they do have they have formulated measures to combat this concern. And firstly, they have they will release an updated version of the Facebook SDK to support iOS 14. So mm. they are going they are doing everything to 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 uh, mitigate this risk. And also they have suggested the business all the small business to create a new ad account dedicated to run to running the app install uh, the uh, ad campaigns for iOS 14 users. So I think they are doing everything to 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 mitigate the risk. That's why mm -hmm. even though this SSG I have done is on a borderline case, uh, I still think Facebook has a great chance of you know, giving us, you know, handsome appreciation return in at least six months. And of course, if we wish to hold it for longer term, I think it's still a valid investment option. And we do need to, I really appreciate what Susan just shared, and this is how I do. When I have a big position on a company, I usually look at their transcript and I, I, I read the early release and also sometimes 10K, 10Q. And the only thing I, I like to share is my 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 um, failure case is that one time I didn't consider the the, the macroeconomic uh, situation in that industry. So I keep on adding the position and it ended up with a very big loss eventually because the company went bankrupt. So and I, I really you know learn a lesson over that. Even though I pay so much attention every quarter, every year, but it still ended up a loss. But this is an approach I definitely I think Suzanne is really really inspiring, and I think this is an approach you know we should all consider adopting. So I would be more comfortable with fifteen percent. Uh earnings growth, where already with these assumptions, the stock price is going to triple, um, mm -hmm. which for this this big of a company, it's, I think, uh, wildly optimistic. Right, I agree with you, Tom. Even that, if changing to 15, if that can double the money, next five years, we meet our goals. Uh, do you want to try that? Uh, I already prepared that. Uh, uh, based on earning growth rate of 17.9 percent and that's uh -huh. that's according to the preferred procedure so i think that is already taken into consideration of prior years um uh statistic ratio Megumi is using 20 right now i was just saying ask this is 15. i oh, have james right yeah oh. no no this is oh. james pdf can you see it oh no, I know. Can you change your uh, earnings to 15% quickly just to see? Back I, here? I also thought, yes. Let's just say even give us 15 can, you know, can meet our goal, potential return goal. Yeah, it's still. So it's, yeah. It's, so it's good a bit more make us a bit more comfortable you know even if yeah and then i think we are 15 percent growth and i think uh face are we still saying maximum is 10 percent of a single stock in our portfolio what do you mean yeah allocation like you mean yeah yeah. Oh. yeah yeah i think okay. we were i just think i think i just saw we were at like 7.7 .7, so we do have room to buy well yeah. we also need to consider the sector allocation too because we also have uh Comcast and Disney, which are uh, communications companies also. Yes. So that's what I wasn't sure of when I was looking at this a uh, week ago. I don't think this was updated. Um, and I forgot how to get their reports. Uh, yes, go to reports. Company size. 
yeah, company. No, that's the or sector. I think that's the size. Okay. Um, sector and industry. Of, Communications, we have uh, um, Comcast is 3.6, Disney is 8.8, .8, and Facebook is 7.7. .7. So we have, and that's 20% of our. That's 20% of our portfolio. service. Yeah, I just, I don't, I, I don't know if they're all in the same sector really, um, in the sense that you know they they do very different things. So Comcast is you know selling internet and and um and programming disney's and theme parks and disney's also theme parks um whereas facebook is a little bit different um so i'm not sure <clears throat> definitely yeah I, yeah i think this know. is different from uh better investments sectors maybe no well they're, they're the, the this is uh uh my that, sector allocation thing came from uh, what's it called? iClub, and iClub uses Morningstar. Okay. But you know, I mean, what, what, it, it, what, the, what the rules are not written in stone. We can uh, we can be flexible, but I just wanted to point that out. But that's one of Torbison's guidelines, I think, is sector diversification. But uh, you know, we don't need to necessarily. We can uh, we can be flexible as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, the other the other thing as well between those three is that you've got Comcast and and Disney have been affected by the pandemic because of the theme parks, uh, Universal mm -hmm. Studios, and and Disneyland, Disney World. Um, okay. Whereas you know Facebook has been thriving during the pandemic, like you said, Megumi, because people are are trying to uh, to connect and so on. So it's um, just from a from a macro sense, I think they're they're slightly different spaces. What do you think the long term case for Facebook is? Like, where's the long term growth? I think it's just going to keep growing for a while. I'm not a Why would it not? fan, Matt. Just, just, just to be clear, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not either, but I hate Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. They have 2.8 billion users right now. So literally, like yeah, a that's third just Facebook, of the world right? is on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. So, so they got another the two thirds to go. So the other so, uh, the uh, the 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 They're expanding in China as well. So this is gonna yeah. grow. You cannot use Facebook in China right now. You can't. I ask. I went to his uh, his uh, annual shareholder meetings. I asked him that question. I said, "What do you think of how you compete against China?" He said that that was a couple of years ago. He said that as long as the government changed their policies, they actually he said that he's working on you know uh, as long as they change their policies that they are able to enter the market. Right now in China, you cannot use uh, uh, Facebook. Yeah, we use the VPN to access Facebook. Yeah, you, and you a lot of local, VPN. a lot of locals also use VPNs now, mm. even though it's against the law. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, there's Africa. <laughs> My, um, I have a, a vet student friend, and she, her, she's third year. She wants to go abroad when she graduates and work with them. Um, you know, uh, people in. South Africa and the tri tribes and et cetera. And she said, you know, there's people that have nothing, but they'll have a cell phone and it comes with Facebook installed. <laughs> uh, I don't think they phone. can make money. Yeah, but how they make money is not by users. We're not paying anything. It's a free. It really is advertising. Ads, yeah. Ads right? Advertising yeah. is the way it drives so, revenue. So the so facebook users when you're on the app like messaging your friends do you like actually look at the ads and are you like buying stuff from that is that no there are different ways for uh, ads for example uh i i post for me running a small school um for example during enrollment i could pay very cheap like ten dollars to increase uh -huh. a radius you know 50 25 miles, you know, people away. I'm uh, sorry, 
basically is saying my current population five miles away, right? So he said, if you pay $10 more, I can get you 5,000 more people to attract to your site. Uh, oh, so it's know. the people paying to put the ads in. That's the rev. It's not like the the consumer has to buy something from that ad. No, no. Okay, I see. It's the information they display for you. So the more mm. they they mine the information about you and whatever you touch and click and look at, they mm. have that information. And then obviously, if you click on something that you like they will even know more that okay we have to send this kind of content to this person right the mm -hmm. the great the, the documentary is the social dilemma which explains how those things are working and how we are the product not the the facebook <laughs> <laughs> okay um we need very to good. move on we need to move on because we have two more uh, um, presentations Comcast, I think, is next. Bernard, are you ready? Can I just uh, before before well, that? Yes, but... a couple. Of, Bernard, <laughs> what, give me one second. I just have a couple of comments here from sure. from guests that I wanted to. Uh, so somebody said, I'll, I'll keep these anonymous. From an investment point of view, Facebook is way undervalued. From an ethical and moral point of view, you do not have a moral compass. I sold all my 500 shares. But looking from another point of view, it doesn't matter what color the cat is, as long as it arches. Catches. Uh, cat, Maybe. What? Sorry. Maybe it's catches the mouse. Catches the mouse, make profit. Um, I just don't care for their business practices. Um, and then someone else said, if you work backwards from 15% earnings per share forecast, using the preferred procedure, then you're forecasting a projected five-year sales growth rate of 12.5%. Uh, <clears throat> and then someone said, I really like this group because I feel the same way about Facebook. <laughs> um, so I think she likes maybe Matt's uh, comment. Um, but she's part in the group, sign her up. <laughs> I vote yes. Um, no. Nah. But customers making purchases is why uh, companies buy ads. And then the final comment is, are these talks recorded for listening to later? And yes, they are. Uh, we do we do post them on on um, on YouTube. Do we post them on Facebook? No, sorry. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we have our okay. club have a YouTube yeah yeah Facebook page. We have a Facebook page. Yes. Yes. So. I think um, we should delete it. But we uh, we should delete it, yes. Okay. <laughs> TikTok. We'll do, we'll do TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. No. Sorry. Uh, let's move on. The uh, next one, Bernard, is Comcast. Go ahead. Shall I make you a presenter, Bernard? Okay. Well, now. Or well, do you want me to bring up your. Well, here's the thing, Jay. Okay. Jay, I sent in, or, or, or Joanne, I, I sent in. A stock selection guide, and I sent in an annual report summary. And if you guys could bring them up, I'll be glad to talk from them. That would help. Uh, Joanne's I, I don't have them on my computer very well. That's okay. Oh. Bernard, Joanne is uh, bringing up okay. your okay. Uh, 10K. Oh, wait. Is oh, 10K? wonderful. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, or do you want your SSG? Well, I want both because. Okay. But cool. here, okay, this is fine. This is okay. it. Maybe we can make the screen larger. It's quite big now. Too big. Okay, not too big, but uh, okay. First of all, Comcast. This is a very big, big company. It's actually like four or five, four, four huge companies. Comcast is the largest cable television system in the United States. That's just uh, there, and plus they have Infinity, Infinity, which is a is a huge provider of internet services throughout the United States. So Comcast, Inter uh, Infinity, and another business they have, uh, NBC, television. They have the largest television 
back uh, broadcasting system in the whole world. They have NBC, MSNBC, CNBC, Oxygen, other channels. So they're huge in Comcast, in Infinity, and in television. Plus now they're going international and they have um, Sky, which they're doing the same thing in Europe and England that they did with Comcast. They provide internet and, 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 and they provide uh, cable television in, in Europe and, and in England. And, and now also they're providing streaming services and, and their streaming services, they're affiliating with other companies like Disney and others. They're working out partnerships. There's Peacock streaming program is gonna be big too, eventually. So, but all right, now let's go into numbers here. The sales for 27.7, I guess that's million. I'm not sure, earnings point, I'm just going off the report, 0 0.73. Um, the, uh, oh boy, we went, uh, don't go down so fast. I I, I didn't get the, 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 well, okay, I guess we're gonna, I can't, okay. Uh, oh, here we are, that's good. And, and why, uh, oh, I, I think these are non-GAAP numbers. I'm using some of the numbers that came from the earnings. Mm -hmm. I listened to the earnings call, call and, and, and I'm not sure. There might be some of the GAAP and some of it, but some of it's not GAAP. And, and, and they didn't tell, I don't know why they use what they use. Now, this, the stock selection guide, the current price is 53.23. The purchase price, I don't know what we paid when we bought it. The closing price, uh, okay, and then 52.5 was the high price in the last 52 weeks, $52.50. And, and, and the low price in the last 52 weeks was 30, 31, I can't, it's hard to read, I'm sorry. Uh, 30, um, yeah, 3170. Okay, thank you very much. You're, you're moving it very good. And move up a little bit more, please. And uh, the, the historical sales growth for five last five years is 7.6%. And, um, but the last year, the sale year over year sales growth was minus. 4.9 percent and, and and that's because of COVID-19 mainly um and there's some of this stuff I don't understand what to fill in but I'm coming down to management okay the profit margin is 13.6 percent and it's gone down it used to be like 14 or 15 percent the, the return on equity is 12.0. It's down a little bit. I think it used to be 13. And, but the estimated, uh, oh boy. Wait, okay, debt on equity is down. It used to be 54% and now it's 53.5%. used to be 54.7, I think. They're paying down their debt a little bit. Um, and, and what's the main problem? I think it's the main problem that they've had is COVID-19. And, and the 10K, I went to the th three or four places to look at the 10K. It's not completely available yet. Uh, maybe next month when I have my annual report, I could make a better report of, as far as the current assets, the current ratio. I couldn't, couldn't even get the balance sheet. I, I went online three or four places, I couldn't get it. It's not complete yet. So, and thank you very much. Uh, oh, and it's cash to begin the year. Okay, now let's go down a little bit. Now, there's some more stuff here. Uh, when they when we had the earnings call, it takes about an hour, but it's very interesting because they have people from the Bank of America, uh, several great, uh, big investment management companies call in with questions. 
but and, and they answer the questions. I don't quite to tell you the truth. I didn't quite understand even all the questions to be truthful, but they're very optimistic. Of course, naturally they would be, but because television sports coming back, Olympic events are expected. Sky is expanding throughout Europe. Uh, all the Comcast retail stores have reopened. The theme parks are opening and Peacock is expanding. And, and also they're raising their dividend from um, to a dollar this year, it used to be like 92 cents. And also they're planning to buy back shares as soon as they can, they wanna buy back some more shares as soon as it's financially a good thing to do. Another thing what they mentioned, uh, oh, let me go to insiders. So this company has very, by the way, whoever's handling, moving this up and down for me, thank you very much. You've done it very good. So I could use the report I sent in. Thank you. Now, and the insiders, this company has very little insider ownership. I think it's 0 0.67, 0.67 percent, less than 1 percent, 0.67 percent insider ownership. Not much, but the last, according to um, uh, Yahoo Finance, in the last six months, there's been considerable insider buying that it's like 20, 20 million shares have bought and like 6 million shares have sold, something like that uh, in the last six months. So that's my report. Now maybe Gina has something to add or, or somebody else wants to add or questions, yeah, but I, um, I recommend Bernard, a hold. Bernard, I think one of the... Uh, yes. I. One of, one of the challenges that they have is just the, is, as you mentioned, this COVID because uh, the theme parks, Universal Studios are are closed. But they, I, I read somewhere that they did uh, have plans to open some theme parks in China, and they think that will uh, <clears throat> increase their, uh, you know, their sales quite a bit. And you know, once once things open up, there's pent up demand and. Uh, they feel that you know their 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 theme park revenue will increase significantly. The other thing is, I think with you mentioned with insiders, a company this large, you you know you wouldn't expect insiders to hold uh, uh, a significant portion because the company is so big. But the fact that they're buying, um, and the fact that they're considering buying back shares because the stock price is somewhat depressed, you know, makes a lot of sense. So. Uh, those are, I think, are positive uh, yeah. indicators. So okay. Disney theme park oh, thanks, is Annie. open. Oh. Disney theme park is open. Disneyland yeah. open in Shanghai. My friend went a, a few days ago. He told me he took his son. He told me it was packed. Um, so actually, Bernard, tested, I looked at uh, SEC that. Jay? What? I'm sorry. Did, did, did he get tested afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. he was in Shanghai. Actually, they are very well controlled in cases in Shanghai, hmm. the way how they do things for COVID. Um, so, uh, Bernard, what I What about just Beijing? The... They have a theme park in Beijing. Beijing they I'm have not a theme sure. park in Beijing. Beijing, too. Did that open yet? Oh, I'm not sure. Disneyland in Beijing, I'm okay, not let's, sure. Let's I'm go uh, back. talking about Disneyland in Shanghai. So, Bernard, I looked at a 10K. They filed a 10K under SEC.gov. Uh, on February 4th, yeah. so you probably can get some financial data filled out. Well, it's first of all, it's very small print. Secondly, well, I couldn't get the complete expanded income statement. I tried. I went to SEC and I couldn't. Uh, next month, I'll get the, the annual report and I'll, I'll be able, I'll know. And if you want, I'll walk through the stock selection guide, how I did it. No, that's if, if fine. You wanna, I said, okay, you would. Um, okay. I see. It is available. I'm just saying. It's not available, Jay, because I, I tried to get it. I couldn't get it. Not completely. Uh, maybe I looked the wrong place. I looked four or five places online trying to get the damn income statement so I could do. I, I appreciate the importance 
of the uh, current ratio and other other figures that promote the financial strength of a company, but I couldn't get it. Uh, it, it, it I could show you if, if you want to come. To, I could give you some websites you go and, and you look at, and it's not there. It's not complete yet. I, I don't know. So, but another thing, though, I, I got this statement from Value Line, which Joanne was very nice to send to me. And it explains to me how the financial strength of this company is A plus from Value Line. They, um, even though, like they say, they're still 53% debt, have debt. Um, anyhow, it's a hold. When I did the stock selection guide, the main thing I looked at for the earnings and profits, and I, I use history. I, I kind of almost extended the past graph, but not quite as much because they're getting bigger and it will slow down. But that's how I got the sales and earnings it is from, from history. And, and, um, and it, like I can say, it comes out of hold. And so that's, that's kind of like pretty much my report. Um, it, it will give us, uh, according to my re estimates, it will be about 7%, 7.9% total return if, if the high PE works. And it will be about uh, 5. 6.5% or 5.5% if the, with the uh, average PE. So it's so, so like 8% to 5% but it, it will give a return and maybe more because things are picking up but that's that's what the stock selection guide shows thank you bernard any, any comments question and i think gina might be at somebody might have had to add want to add to this thanks whoever drove this pretty good especially the first part where they let me go up and down and and, and see see what i sent in thank you you're welcome okay um okay should we move on to um, LAM research? Gabe, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna switch. Oh, okay, thanks, Jay. The only question Thank I would have, on, the only question I had on Comcast later on is if we perceive that our portfolio should have returned about 15%, holding something that will give us nine, ten percent may be a kind of candidate for replacement. I think we should consider once we see the annual review and so on. A comment. Well, so well, what yes, was if, the per return? If you have a bet, you have to... I'm sorry, Bernard. The Tom, do you remember what was what the was PERT the, what, return? What, return? What was the potential return on the PERT for this company, Comcast? Was it above 10, below 10? I think below 10. Oh, okay. Because according to Bernard's SSG. Uh, the stock selection. Yeah, 7.9 well, or 7, the, 7 something. The, the, the PERT is based off of the SSGs. Well, I didn't do the PERT because the form asked me to do a report, annual report summary. So I didn't do a PERT form this time. I did the annual report summary. But, but, but anyhow, but the, in the stock selection guide, it says seven. Go ahead. Oh, okay. The the but data seven point nine percent comes from the stock selection guides. Yeah. So it depends on what stock selection okay, guide. Okay. Well, then the per what was used by Tom Loftus. So I, I assume it's the, the same as uh, Bernard's or or very close. Okay. Um. Quick question. So, yeah. is is there only one form that annual because annual stocks, what's it called? The form I'm supposed to use, it doesn't look like the one that Bernard used. So we have an old, we have an old form and a new form. Yeah, um, but I think he used somebody, the older one. Can we remove the old one? So, I, or are we, yeah. can we use either one or? No, we want to use the latest one. Yeah. We'll, I want we'll double check the of... template folder. Yeah. Okay. I want we'll double check the, the template folder. Okay. I thought Great. I used the latest one. It, it says that, to copy it and, and that's what i did yeah okay but all right it's confusing okay, okay. Because, uh, I, I think we need to move along here all okay, right Gabe, thank you. you 
All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I will be presenting the quarterly report for LAM Research. Um, so for the most recent quarter, which ended December 31st, 2020, uh, LAM Research increased their earnings per share by 73.8%. Uh, this is higher than the analysts expected long-term earnings per share growth. Uh, over the trailing 12 months, the earnings per share increased by 49.3%, which is also higher than the analysts expected long-term earnings per share growth. In that same period, the company increased revenues by 33.8%, um, all of which are record setting uh, stats for the company. Um, over the trailing 12 months, their revenue increased by 24.9%. And so as of December 31st, also their pre-tax profits grew by 37.1% in the last 12 months, um, also higher than the analysts expected long-term earnings per share growth. And there's a current uh, earnings per share estimate for um, the annual rate of 14%. And the average earnings per share growth rate expected for companies in the semiconductor equipment and materials industry group is 1.4%, which is lower than the estimate for LAM Research. And so LAM Research is currently growing faster than its peers, often um, offering better investment prospects for long-term oriented investors. And so um, I went through the 10K report and um, I looked at some of the market conditions um, for this current year, 2021. Um, there's still strong demand for semiconductors, uh, which is led by um, a higher layer accounts in NAND, uh, which is uh, a type of memory, and strong spending in DRAM um, and foundry logic momentum. So uh, LAM is a supplier of uh, foundry equipment for a lot of uh, semiconductor companies to produce their uh, chips. And so um, there's been some supply chains in the semiconductor industry um, over the last year, uh, which are expected to be resolved uh, in, in this current year. And so there's a lot of pent up demand for semiconductors, uh, given mm -hmm. the rise in trends for like 5G, uh, the Internet of Things and uh, gaming consoles. And so in 2021, the wafer fabrication equipment spending is estimated in the high 60 to $70 billion range. And so in the, uh, the quarterly um, meeting, the management gave guidance for uh, increase of about 3.7 billion uh, plus or minus 200 million in revenue. And also uh, 6.6.55% plus or minus 40%, none gap earnings per share. And uh, that's about all, um, unless anyone has any questions, I could take those. Uh, do you wanna show your SSG? Sure. It looks like he did not make any changes. Oh, okay. But I want to see the quarterly data. Oh, just the last page. Um, quarterly data? Okay. Yeah. So here's the quarterly data uh, for the SSG. Um, I have highlighted the most recent quarter, uh, which the highlighted values reflect the um, what's in the PERT report. And they're currently earnings and earnings per share and sales are continuing uh, to increase. Uh, year over year and quarter over quarter. Gabe, this, um, this industry is, is cyclical. Um, do you have any, any idea like how long this cycle might last? The 
kind um, of a, why do you say that, Henny? Why do you think that this industry is a cyclical? So oh, the, the industry. industry. Yep. So the industry is cyclical because um, when there's new um, silicon chips released, um, it's not something that people just go out and buy, like you know, paper products or groceries. Uh, like the products that have the semiconductor chips. They have a lifespan um, when you consider cell phones, that lifespan is roughly, um, say, one to one to three years before uh, folks go out and, you know, upgrade. And so because of that, um, it's a big reason for the cyclical nature of the industry. So I'm guessing I'm guessing like with five with the 5G uh implementation that that this might go on for a couple of years probably right but um um the um this this upswing in, in earnings and sales yeah that's correct so um 5g um the move for ai products and uh also for um server farms uh, all of these are you know reasons that you know in the next one to two years, Leon Research will continue to have a rise in you know, all of their uh, financials. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dave, this, this is another company that has a fairly low return, right? Predicted return. You said another company? Well, because like when we just looked at uh, Comcast, it was like we're trying to target. I think it's ten percent or above okay. return. So can you go to the second page? I want to see. Uh, well, yeah, right there. Yeah. So like you, the average forecast is point nine percent, and the high forecast is four point eight. Yeah. So, so that that's below the market. Yeah. Okay. So another company. So Suzanne, I don't know if, she, if she's still on. Still here. So in this case, you know, it's a good company. We've done well with it, but our expected rate of return forecast is below market. Is this something that we would consider? Selling? What would you buy with the money? Well, that would be a challenge. We'd have to find something. It would be a Facebook. A I vote Facebook. for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, question on the uh, earnings. If the company is doing so well and we have held this company for two years, why are we not bumping up on the earnings? Can we look at the actual SSG, um, Gabe? <laughs> Do you have the live one? Uh, not currently loaded. Oh, you um, have a stock of comparison. Just go ahead and click that. It will take you to there. Click the, yeah. I'll go up, 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 up there in the line. No, LRCX, yep. February 15, 2021. Click that. There you go. Yeah. yeah, this <laughs> one, for, so the company this is not the, the same SSG that I uh, submitted. Uh, this one is uh, a brand new one. Um, we could oh, okay. go through it. If Can you, you also projection starting line say annual? So you gave 15. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Sales, you gave what? 15 or 10? I forgot. Uh, sales growth was 10. Earnings okay. per share was 10.8. Okay, 10, 10. So don't, that, do you want to, okay, go ahead numbers. and put 10 there. Go ahead and put 10 there. So don't you want to increase the earnings? Okay, go ahead and put 10. Because you said the company has a guidance, right, on the earnings. So it's $3 something, right? Put put the, put the 10 there, see what that guidance gave you. Why do you give 10.8? Uh, so these numbers were taken from uh, the annual report when we did the uh, annual report review. You mean quarterly report? No, you the mean, annual last year. You mean from last last year? Okay, ten point eight. I don't understand why we so, eight. What does that mean? 
what was the company's guidance on earnings that you they just gave you? On earnings, the guidance was uh, six point five six dollars and fifty five percent um, plus or minus six forty dollars. cents. Okay, six fifty five. Okay, that that's non GAAP, and that's only that's for, non -gap. For, yeah. for one quarter. Yeah, that's non GAAP. Yeah. Okay, can you go back to your SSG one more time, please? Oh, the other one probably. Okay. I think, yeah. I thought. Gabe, did you, uh, did you look at value line at all? Uh, yes. Give me one sec, see if I can pull that up. So Why this is says... the value line report. They have so 12, and a... 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Yeah, but look at the uh, look at the projections for the price at the top there. Oh minus yeah, 560, five, 375. Five five. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the revenue they give, the earnings they give 12.5. So yeah, I will say bump up a little bit. So let's use. That's what Mike Turbinson was saying. We need to be a bit more. Plus, we already have for what, a couple of years, two or three years? Let's give some confidence in this company. Uh, well, so I, historically, just, I just recently bought um, more shares in the company. Um, insiders uh, have also been purchasing shares. Um, there's a net uh, increase in shares purchased versus shares sold. Um, so I personally, I believe that the 10% uh, forecasts that we have here are very um, conservative. conservative. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering what was the, what will be the last five years growth for the earnings if you cross uh, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15? Uh, no, c cross on the graph, but, uh, then it will automatically do it for you. Go on See the graphs. See where it says 11, 12, 13, 14? The axis. The axis. Right there. X. Oops, up. <laughs> right there. Oh, I see. Axis. The yeah. axis. Yeah. There, there, there you go. There you go. There, there, there. Okay. I'm just curious for the last five years, what's the. So we have 20. Yeah. So 28. So I. Um, uh, for the sales, ten percent. I'm okay with sales, ten percent. For earnings, I think I I will go twelve or fifteen or something like that. Twelve or thirteen or fourteen. So, quick question. For the earnings, so, yes. Uh -huh. So, um, for the estimates that we have here, why are we? Uh, going so low compared to what the analysts are predicting. So that's why we're bumping up right now. Yeah, but what we have here, the analysts predict sales to increase by 20. Okay. No, those, those, gave, those numbers are two-year estimates. And then the forecast that you're putting in the uh, in the box here is is an annualized for, for the next five years. So every year for the next five years, you're saying, going to grow at 10 percent uh the 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 analysts usually don't predict more than two years mm -hmm. in advance mm -hmm. in terms of sales got it that makes sense okay can we see your second page now all right so we oh. go here Two, you so got to put in your high, high pe okay, high pe just go average high, maybe uh, 18, 18. See what happens. One. Just see what happens. 18. The oh, yeah, it's the current is way. It's way it's yeah, when it's in dollars. It's 30. Yeah, it's so, yeah, that doesn't not make sense. It's already over. Let's go with the current. Well, that's no. going to be too high. Maybe yeah, too, too high. Well, let's find a sweet spot around. Well, let's see. <laughs> So 2020 is 
peace, right? So you we oh, think yeah. the next couple of years will the they can I will not go with what's happening in 2019. I would say about I would go the average, I'd say 15% PE, sorry. Um, but I will not put below, 20, it'll, 20, it'll, it yeah. makes it the price lower than the current price. Right. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So okay. I see what happens. <laughs> It's overpriced. <laughs> it's overpriced. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can we also maybe we can take this offline? We should we can take a look at their P's on the big chart, look at the business oh, yeah. cycle, okay. new business yeah. cycle, see if right now should be the exit point or okay. Let me yeah. bring this okay. up, but you guys can continue see if I can show. Okay. Uh, I, I have okay. big charts up if you oh, want. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we can want to take a look at the business cycle. I have it too as well, but Oh, Alan, did you draw the line? I like how you no, draw the line. No, for this one I didn't, but it it looks like it's at the, you know, high price type of perspective, right? So okay, I let's, let's see the screen. Show your screen, Adam. Okay. Do you see my screen now? Yes, we can yeah. see. Okay. So as you see, like if you look at the cycle of the right. of the stuff, maybe like what did we what did we say? Average was fifteen or. Average yeah. was 18.1. Yeah, so if you draw a line right. somewhere right. here close to 20, yes, we are right. kind of we had the buying opportunity around here, right? And now we are way above the average, and mm -hmm. I would even say mm -hmm. uh, higher than the high PE, right? So it's a good time to sell unless you assume that the cycle we're seeing here is not gonna be consistent. Earnings trading earnings are going well, so but the <laughs> price I think is really over over what we ex you know would be the buying now, right? So selling is good idea, but probably holding if you have a if you feel good about the company and and what they're projecting, maybe you can keep holding. But I don't know if you would buy more. I feel good about this industry because semiconductor is doing really well, and maybe we I think we can longer. trim them. Can we trim them? I mean, we can. We have a one week to consider. We can trim it a little bit to take some profit off. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like you know, at a at a PE of thirty for the high, is it going to go much higher from a PE perspective? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. The earnings That's would really have to uh, go up high yeah. in order to get that that, that P. Um, yeah, so the I earnings are at an all-time high. P is at an all-time high practically. So, yeah. Penny, right. I think Penny. I will be. Penny, this is ready. Hi. High highest P ratios here last five years is. 22.8 how can we go near 30 uh, it's already no, I'm, 30. Saying, I'm saying that if you look at the chart here the highest that it reached was 30 something, something. right so um, mm -hmm. you know I don't I don't think it's going to go much higher than that is what I'm saying so, so if we look at the PE uh, ratios of other uh, companies in the industry they are much higher than what uh lamb research is at like lamb research has the lowest uh pe ratio of all the other of uh other companies in the industry the um this chart uh is it adam the like the uh, can can you can you make it uh can you cover a longer period of time or is that the maximum yeah I think if you five want years. I can, uh, five years is my. Oh, yeah, let's do five years. Yes, let's yeah. do that. Yeah, you will Oh, it wasn't see... showing two days. Okay. All right. No, I was showing oh, not... four years. What, what chart? Oh, four years, four what? is very similar. What, 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 is... what chart these... is this? What this chart? Is the... where, do you get... where do you get this, this chart? From big charts. Big chart. Big chart. Big chart. So, yeah. Big charts. So... Okay, thank you. Yeah. So it is at the high P. 
So it is high. Typically, yeah. like for educational purposes, I can show you what uh, I was trying to show. Um, club review. It's it's a, it's in the thirty range only during January and February. Before that, it was not that. So high. typically, I wanted to show this kind of perspective where you can look at this life cycle of the company, right? Then you mm -hmm. show the, the low PE, the high PE, the current PE kind of perspective, and kind of, you can perceive that the high PE is the exit sell point kind of, and the low is buy. So you're looking for this perspective, right? So if yeah. you keep that in mind, you will see that if we take the life cycle, like a company life cycle into perspective that that's what it really was, then we are really high, above high PE practically. Right, at this exit. Point. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. one yeah. could argue it's a good exit point. Yeah. Yeah, because Unless we know something fundam much. fundamentally that this for some reason will keep growing and this will change their business cycle. but given cyclical nature and so on i think hard to tell all right so i agree with jane i think i think it's probably worth trimming a certain uh, portion of it do we have the position you said 10 percent, or what position we have on stock uh, value that we want to keep are we above that Be, like close to it so lamb research is currently Five, roughly 5% five of our, our portfolio. Do we have a hard rule of how much we can have maximum for one company? 10%. 10%? 10%? 10%? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have another thought. And how this much have we made on it? Yeah. A lot. We, we did okay. quite well. Okay. We did very well. So we one. made uh, 3,000. 300%. 300%. In two years, oh well, two yeah. and a half, two and a half years. It's doing very well. Um, I have another thought: is we continue hold um, as for people's if we follow Michael Turberson's practice, maybe some of folks they may consider to trim on their own personal portfolio. Because we already have a lot of cash. Because earnings yeah. are very strong right now. Why would we sell it if it's doing well and then have more cash? <laughs> I guess it's my question. Yeah, but we have to look for other companies like watch. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we have right. to replace it for sure. Okay. So unless we find a replacement. Facebook. I have a quick question. Do we, do we have do we have a minimum? Like we, I see like 2.2%, 3.8%, 3.1%. Were we going to try to bump these up or? Yeah, I think that's a good, another good point is that, you know, um, with, with, when we have like a, a, a small position, it, it's not really impacting the portfolio. So those, we should be looking if they're, you know, if they're undervalued right now, we should be looking to increase the size of those because it takes a lot of work to mm -hmm. follow these companies. And if you're, you know, if it's a small position, it's not doing much for you. So yep. I think this is where the conviction um, approach would work well. Like if we, you know, if we're, if we're not planning on buying more then we should sell them. Yeah, we, we have about $80,000. And if we put a uh, 5% position to be, a, that'd be 4,000 per position. Mm. I know some are going to because uh, why not 10%? 10%, 10%, not five. 10%. I guess the other question should be larger. Do we look at other semiconductor and to compare? Is there a better story, better right. story to buy something, maybe a yeah. different life, life cycle of the company, right? Yeah, yeah, we can challenge. Yeah, definitely, this is a good industry. Yeah, like seems like this may be not the best time to buy more, but right. let's look at other companies in that space if it's exactly the same or not. Yeah. Maybe in, I think, I think in the future, 
in the future we, we will have a start watch list yeah. so that will be handy to have we, we right. have 15 and we more them. minutes we have 15 more minutes so uh let's figure out what we're going to do if we're okay. they're going to be are there going to be any motions what about my thing yeah oh uh, do we have a disney matt and disney got pushed to next month yeah okay disney pushed uh so yeah so john john has uh, oh. do we have a motion first or do um, we do the no, education no. Topic? Uh, no. could we do... how about how about i would move that we have that the you can hold up to 10 percent in one stock no more than 10 percent not five percent what do you think? No, that is the, I would move that. that. I was that just referring to minimum position is what I was, that was the point I was making. But yeah, I think we need to move along here. here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So I'm just going to cut off the discussion for a second and, and uh, give the uh, screen to John, please, uh, Joanne. Okay. And then we'll come back and uh, it, so in the meantime, while John is speaking, if people want to formulate any motions, um, do that. And then uh, we'll take the last five minutes to uh, to discuss. Okay, if you were in our Google Drive, you probably noticed that uh, the, dra the structure drastically changed. But um, basically based on what Hanny presented to me a couple months ago, the basic structure of it, it's on the first page now of Google Drive. It's basically like this. Uh, templates has been moved to its own thing. It's blue now, in other words. It's now blue and at the main level. So you can find your templates easier. And I created a Google a table of contents. It's on the main, main page as well, right there. And this is it. So it's uh, maybe a little bit too detailed, but it tries to just, just be able to scroll through if you don't like to search scroll through this and see most of what is in the Google Drive. Sometimes like the BI books, it says C folder for many books because there's too many books to be listing all of them. Other times, um, <laughs> each part of stock is a folder. Click on earnings reports folder to see the folders for your stock, but I'm not gonna list every single stock that we have right now in, a, in its folder. These are all links, by the way, if you can tell that already. And um, yeah, I listed all the, uh, all the stock studies because that might be helpful to see what's what's what sectors we've studied in the past what industries we've studied in the past and education topics are also there as well uh trying to find out where they are here they are so all the education topics listed with what they were and the folder for each one and that's pretty much it uh, any questions or comments that's great that's really thank good. you yeah appreciate and, it and and i'd like just like to add E to easily search, see where it says search and drive at the top. You can just type in what you're looking for and it'll bring up the list of different, yeah. Uh, I, I, I wish we'd have a class on this because I can, I've always get screwed up when I go, go to Google Drive and I can never find anything. I can help you, Bernard. Uh, all right, maybe. It, I okay. think it was changing, that's why now it's steady. Yeah. Um, the only comment I have about this, and it's a good job, John. That was really good. Is the templates? Are we? Um, we should probably just look at if we have any old templates. Get rid of them so that people don't get confused about which ones to use. Or we can. Uh, can you click on the templates folder for a second? Yeah. Sure. Um, is there an? Yeah. There's an archive, so we'll just keep the the main ones here, and then. Uh, uh keep the other ones in the in the archive so okay yeah so if anyone's okay. looking for a template this is where you find it and and then as it says please make a copy don't use the the actual template just make a copy of it and uh use that instead okay okay thank oh, you very much john uh, thank you john hey, thanks Thank you, John. Yeah, so when we make a folder to, to upload our stuff, like once it's in there, can we not move things around? Was that just me or? Oh, I had, a, I had something else I want to talk about regarding that, Megumi. Um, okay, all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this table of contents, you can, um, I tried it out and you can move something from like from in, in the Google Drive 
mm -hmm. from here to way down here. Link will still work. Of course, it won't be accurate as far as this table of contents goes, but um, the link will still work. Um, you can add stuff. I guess if people want to add things, hopefully you can update the table of contents, or or you can let me know and I'll do it if you want me oh, to do it. No, it was just within my folder. I made a 2020, you know, um, a Facebook folder for all my stuff. So I, my idea was to dump everything in there and then organize it, but I couldn't move it once I, like, I was going to oh. put all the yeah and. Oh, okay. That could be a problem, actually. So I, I guess I'll have to organize it first and then upload it as I want it to be in the drive. That will be the best. Uh, well, could we talk later about this? Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to make sure that everyone else ever can access their documents. Um, that could have been disrupted with the move, but um, that's what I'm afraid of right now, but may not be the case. But Okay. I uh, could just try to clarify exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We have 10 All minutes. Right. Are there any, um, does anyone want to make any motions on the three stocks that we presented today? We had uh, Facebook. Uh, yeah, I move, I move that we buy Facebook. Okay. I move that we buy uh, Facebook. I move and sell Facebook. Bernard's motion came first. So, um, and Bernard, you're going to say the dollar amount. Bernard, dollar amount. Joanne, could I? Uh, a, th a thousand, because we already have some. One or two thousand. Whatever okay, gets I'm us just, to ten. Whatever we have. We Joanne, have do you want to do you want to give me the yeah, screen 10%. for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the uh, my iClub? No, it's on the agenda. Oh. Okay. You have two screens? Uh, yes. Okay. Let me get rid of this, close that. Okay. So can we check so, how what's the position now that we have? Like how much we have and what we can seven point seven percent is what we he um, said the one or two thousand. I will say let's just buy two thousand. Um but now we're saying one or two because we have a lot of money. Okay. Bernard, but, are you okay with that? I second 2000. Okay. okay, and uh, Adam, Adam is second. Okay, and then we're going to have, right after this, we're going to have another motion <laughs> to sell Facebook <laughs> by Max. Okay, so uh, voting is going to end on the. Uh, I don't want to give it the 17th. That's is it. Uh, you guys have yeah. President's Day, right? So. 16th. That, that's his. That's his 317. February. 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 Hey, February. You're, you're February. giving it a, a month. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you should be getting an email. Okay. All right. So I'm okay. gonna. Okay. Gonna vote yes. And then uh, I'm going to vote yes on Max as well. Okay, just a second. Are we not having any discussion? We should have a discussion because. I thought we did. Because well, Matt wants to sell it. We we'll want to hear why he said sell. Oh, okay. What was the discussion? Right. We already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think it's a bad long term hold. Define uh, long term. Why want to buy long term. <laughs> Yeah, well, like why, why? I can't, why is can't it just personal? It? You hate Facebook and that's it. <laughs> I hate no, I Facebook too, but I'm saying bye. Yeah, no I know. You can yeah. still make money. <laughs> yeah. I think we can follow, with your finances. We follow yeah. the Gumi's recommendation that we yeah. follow the the news and that there'll be an indication if it is not going forward, then we can sell then. Unless somebody okay. really wants to sell it. I I want to sell it. Okay. You seriously want to sell it? When nobody seconded it, so I think that's kind of the point, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Any other nobody any other seconded. motions? I, I move we sell land I, research. I, yeah. I I second it. All of it? Yes. Yeah, how much? The whole entire position. All of it. Yeah. Wow. 
How much is I that? Will I will second it. I will second it. I think Jane already second. Okay. Uh, so what? Whoa. Sorry. Oh, you know. Okay. When you say uh, discussion. discussion, I want to talk about this company because okay. I heard what Gabe was, Gabe was saying that the business doing the business whatever they are doing, the pipeline, 5G, smart, smart, uh, 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 internet of things, all that. I, I felt like the company management is still doing well too, looking at the SSG, it's just the PEs is at high point. Actually, that question I wanna ask Suzanne, well, if we listen to uh, Mike Turbinson, right? So he's saying that look at the PEs that gave you a one indication of when to exit, when to enter. So, but I also want to look at the other aspects of that company. The the management is doing well, whatever they are doing, the business. So I think I think it still has potential, but the potential return is not as what we are aiming for right now. I don't think it's a good idea to sell. All of it. So that doesn't. So I, I'm, I'm confused by what you said, Jay. You said the potential return is not as good as what we're looking for, um, but we shouldn't sell. So we should not sell all of it. It's just like a Jane was saying, trim or trim down or sell half. You know, yes. and put down the watch well, list and when the, the point is, is low. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure how much we own of this, but 5.1%. Okay, so yeah. I mean, one of the things that Mike did, which we should probably adopt, is if you know if we if we're gonna sell it, then we should have another another one in the pipeline that that we replace it with from our watch list, and then you can see what the potential impact on the portfolio is. So if you're replacing this with something, say that's gonna give you the fifteen percent or more, then you can see it using the PERT, what what impact that has on the entire portfolio. Then why can't we wait to challenge the company until we find a replacement? But look, you can take the, the gains now and use those gains to buy another company that will have, let's say, 10, 15% gain. This one at this point will not have another 10, 15% potentially gain. At least that's how we see it, right? Because right now you take the profit, you add a cash in your account. Yes, amen. And then amen. You, have, you have, you add more cash in your account and you don't know what to buy. But the Why point is that we have to buy something at some, as soon as we can, like to do study and find oh. something. Yeah. So to to be to be fair, though, just um, you know, next month we have uh, like five. I don't know, ten no ten annual reports, right? So we're not going to have a stock study next month. Then the, maybe the month after that, so that's March, April, we might have a stock study. I think, Matt. Um, can yeah. Say. So well, if we have a stock study at that point, then we might buy something in in in. Uh, we're going to buy something third week in April. So, um, and if we vote on it, then maybe it's like June or April, May. Sorry. Next, next month, May, we may want to add to current positions after yeah, the yeah, yeah. report. I doubt it. Yes, okay. yes, yeah, yes. Possibly, I guess. Uh, we have That's two true. minutes. That's true. Two minutes. I was just saying we can wait until we find a replacement because er, the the well, earnings is still strong. Well, Nothing wrong we with have a company. motion, and we can either we can vote it up or down. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so we've had the discussion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna send this thing out, and then, so that I don't get uh, mobbed later, I'm gonna move my screen and vote. <laughs> okay. You guys can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Okay. I just voted. Okay. All right. Okay. So that ends our meeting. Um, please vote. And now we're going to open it up to our guests if they have any comments. I'm uh, going to stop the recording. I'll stop please, the recording. Please. Thank you. Go here in alphabetical order. You don't need.